This sort of video, as you can imagine, I'm sure YouTube algorithm is going to hate. I think this is more important than any other video that I could put out. Dealing with the darkness that we find ourselves in. Team, right now I think, uh... I think I have about 345 uh, that's in my charge, and, and every every six to eight months, about half of that population changes out, right? There, so there's a lot of turnover, and you can imagine that year after year, uh, with the particular job that I have and have had for the last four plus years, sheer volume of life-changing events that I've had to been there to walk alongside some folks with, as well as support and counsel and just be present with and I say that to, to, to tell you that whether or not Murphy has slapped you in the face and, and, and punched you down or whether it's somebody around you that maybe you know the story that they're going through or not there are countless of us right now hell just this past week I've had three uh, four uh, life-changing stories that's been brought to my attention. We're talking, and when I talk about life-changing stories, like like what kind of stuff are you talking about, Stoker? I'm talking about domestic violence. I'm talking about sexual harassment, sexual assault. I'm talking about dealing with cancer, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a child, losing our our spouses, our, our fathers, our mothers, brothers and sisters, grandparents, folks that have raised us. You know, I'm talking about things like financial crisis and, and making poor decisions or just finding the economic crisis right now, smacking us where we have to start making decisions about how we can do things. I'm talking about the, the loss of child care. I'm talking all sorts of economic and social and relational challenges that, that are, are defining moments, good, bad, or indifferent, both in that moment and in the future. I'm talking about psychological issues and depression, suicidal ideations, as well as attempts all around us in your community, and maybe even with you right now, there are folks who are going through extremely dark and challenging times. And so the first thing I wanna do is submit to you um, a, if it's not you, check on those that you love. Ask hard questions. Be an advocate for those who are in need. If it is you, friend, I, I want to let you know that I hate that you're going through this. It, it, it's not right. Odds are it has nothing to do with you as an individual. That This circumstance and this rock that's coming crashing down on top of you but you're not alone. The, there are community groups and advocates in every city, county, and state, as well as nationwide, filled with folks who have unfortunately walked through these same events, who want to do nothing but to be there with you. Now my channel has been criticized for being a little bit smaller uh, than some others. But I count that as a blessing because if you don't have or you don't know how to find any of these resources, then email me, stokermatic at gmail.com. And I can promise you that I have the time and I have the desire to be present with you, even if I don't have the answers, even if I don't know what to say. I, I, I'll be there for you as much as I can. Now this sort of video, as you can imagine, I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is going to hate because it's not in line with, you know, the, the content of the channel and they're not going to know how to deal with this and it may hinder and hurt things. But I, I, think, I think this is more important than any other video 
that I could put out. Dealing with the darkness that we find ourselves in. I'll try to, to share some links down in the description of a lot of these groups that I've referenced. And a lot of them are going to be more nationwide. Uh, because again, I, I don't know what, where all of y'all come from and you live. But, you know, when you think about hospital support staff behavioral health staff, your insurance companies that, that hopefully cover a lot of these things, um, talking about local churches, community organizations, and outreach groups, whether or not you're, you're dealing with a substance or alcohol abuse problem. And there, there are so many people out there who want to see wellness and peace come back into your life or into the lives of those you know who are struggling with these hard and challenging times. Thomas Merton said, no man is an island. And he was writing this, understanding th this awareness and appreciating that, that, that nobody stands on their own. There are people off to our left and off to our right. I certainly believe in, in, in that, and I believe in community, not only the community that's found here, but more importantly, the community that you have around you and that you're a part of. We need each other to check on us. You know, some days uh, the string that, that, that's holding me up, sometimes it's spiderweb thin. And it casts a lot of doubt on a lot of things, both you know professionally and personally, and and where I'm at in my stage in life, and how I look back on life, and how I look forward, and what I see in my perceptions. And I am certainly thankful for my family, especially for my wife, and for some of the the, the folks that I work with. And, and in my line of work right now, I don't really have a lot of peers. I have a couple folks that, that I do count as friends. Uh, but even though I work with a lot of people, they're, they're not confidants. But I, I do have a few that, that I have, and I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that. But I know a lot of people don't have that. So if you see somebody, maybe it's a change in, in behavior, right? Maybe it's a, a physiological change. Maybe when somebody comes into a room, their demeanor changes. Maybe they start giving away possessions. Maybe they start talking about how things don't matter. Maybe they confide in you that, that they've been hurt physically, emotionally, or spiritually by somebody. I, I would submit to you that if you find yourself in that place, or if you ask somebody and, and you get an answer that is honest and it's raw, that one of the most important things that we can do, situation dependent, A, get, get a person to a, a safe space where they feel comfortable. Sometimes that may mean going to a hospital to get some medical treatment. Sometimes it may be going to, to get uh, some immediate counseling by a professional could be a chaplain or, or any other sort of behavioral health specialist. Maybe it's just getting away from a physical location because what they're dealing with here in this space is too challenging. Make sure that person is safe. And, and as, as somebody is sharing with you, I, I would submit to... Be present. And what I, what I mean by that is it's okay to not have the answers. It's, it, it's, it's okay to listen and be still and be present with this, with this person in this moment. They've put trust and confidence in you to share things with you that is a, 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 a dark and troubling time. And so the last thing, you know, that we want to try to tell somebody is 
again, situation dependent, you know, but when you, when you tell somebody who may have just been raped that it's okay and they're going to be okay, like that's, that, that's not helpful in that moment. There may come a point in time where, where that sort of conversation and dialogue of, of past valleys turning into mountaintops, that, that's the story for them to tell. And you don't need to tell them that directly. Yeah, I, and I hope that's going to be true for everybody who is walking through a valley of darkness, that it, that it does turn to a bright and beautiful sunrise that enables them to care for others going through a hard and challenging time. But in that moment, what folks need is presence. They need assistance, and they may need some advocacy. You can't force support onto somebody or for somebody. Sometimes, depending on the situation, um, you know, especially in the case of like sexual assault, you know, if they go to uh, an emergency room. They're going to have a, maybe a safe kit and a safe exam done. And it's very intrusive on that individual. And as law enforcement becomes involved, you know, that, uh, these detectives and these investigators, they're, they're not necessarily advocates for a victim. They are raw data collectors. And all they care about is truth. And so they're asking hard and challenging questions, and it can cause somebody to relive these moments. It's important, especially in events like this, that that medical and that forensic and that investigative piece begins extremely early in order to find hard evidence, incredible evidence against that perpetrator. But if somebody pushes off and maybe they, they, they want to talk to a support group and they don't necessarily want to file any sort of claim or or suit against somebody again be present be supportive team life can be extremely dark on a lot of us but I believe through my experience and as far as I can tell through through good folks like you out there that are in this team and in this community here, I have a lot of faith and confidence of all of our abilities to, to do that, to be present and to help those in need. Team, leave some words of encouragement down below. Maybe it was a challenging time or story that you know that somebody went through. Maybe it was even something that you've gone through. Or maybe it's, a, it's a, an additional a support group that's out there for somebody that maybe somebody can contact in time of need. That way we can continue to grow an authentic community that builds one another up and knows that the most important thing is nothing to do with our field craft out here, but it's with us as individuals and our virtues, our values, and our beliefs. Team, I appreciate you all so much. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.